Good morning, friends. Um, we are praying uh, with Psalm 32 from the Orthodox Study Bible for those who enjoy spending time in the presence of God and uh, enjoy those videos um, that we are recording with the Psalm. Uh, we just want to thank the Lord uh, for His presence and that He has greatly blessed us with these um, Psalms and we will continue to to spend time in His Word and um, just rejoice uh, because uh, this is a great reward that we're getting uh, pronouncing His Word and declaring His truth to the world and so uh, we really hope that you will receive the same blessing as well everyone who is listening and more people with, will join us we are reading again from the Orthodox Study Bible, Psalm is uh, 33, which corresponds to Psalm 30, I'm sorry, and the Psalm is 32, which corresponds to Psalm 33 from all the other English Bible versions, the evangelical ones, uh, due to split after Psalm 9 or 10, starting Psalm 32 by David. Rejoice greatly in the Lord, O righteous ones. Praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to the Lord on the lyre. Sing praises to Him on a ten strange instrument. Sing to Him a new song. Sing praises beautifully with a shout. For the word of the Lord is right. And all his works are done in faithfulness. He loves mercy and judgment. The earth is full of Lord's mercy. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were established. And all the hosts of them by the bread of his mouth. Who gathers the waters of the sea together as in a wineskin. Who put the pieces of the in storehouses? Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the world's inhabitants be shaken by Him. For He spoke, and they were made. He commanded, and they were created. The Lord scatters abroad the councils of the nations, and He sets aside the reasoning of peoples. And he rejects the counsel of rulers. The counsel of the Lord abides forever. The thoughts of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chose as an inheritance for himself. The Lord looked attentively from heaven. He saw all the sons of men. From his uh, prepared dwelling place, he looked upon all who dwell on the earth, he who alone fashioned their hearts, he who understands all their works. A king is not safe by his large army, and a giant shall not be saved by his immense strength. A horse is a false hope for salvation, and it shall not be saved by its enormous power. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him, on those who hope in His mercy to deliver their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul shall wait for the Lord. He is our helper and protector. For our heart shall be glad in him, and we hope in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us as we hope in you. Now we are reading the commentary to the Psalm 32. Psalm 32 is a prophecy revealing the Trinity as the creator of the world. The Lord refers to the Father, like in verses 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 18, 20, and 22. 
Let us read again those verses. Verse 1. Rejoice greatly in the Lord, O righteous ones. Praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to the Lord on the lyre. Sing praises to him on a ten string instrument. For the word of the Lord is right. And all his works are done in faithfulness. He loves mercy and judgment. The earth is full of the Lord's mercy. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were established. Let all the earth fear the Lord and let all the world's inhabitants be shaken by him. The Lord scatters abroad the counsels of the nations and he sets aside the reasoning of peoples and he rejoices the counsel of rulers. The counsel of the Lord abides forever, the thoughts of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose as an inheritance for himself. The Lord looked attentively from heaven, he saw all the sons of the sons of men. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy. Our soul shall wait for the Lord, he is our helper and protector. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us as we hope in you. Further, continuing with the commentary, the word of the Lord is the son of the father like in verses 4 and 6 for the word of the lord is right and all his works are done in faithfulness by the word of the lord the heavens were established and all the host of of them by the bread of his mouth further continue with the commentary the Holy Spirit is the bread of his mouth, like in verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were established, and all the host of them by the bread of his mouth. Therefore, the Father created the world through his Son and his Spirit, who are his co-equals. And verse 9 reveals that the Father spoke and commanded the words in Genesis 1 and the Son and the Holy Spirit fulfilled that which is commanded. Let's read verse 9 again. For he spoke and they were made, he commanded and they were created. Further, the commentary from the Orthodox Study Bible says, Therefore the saints, the righteous ones, worship the Trinity, like in verses 1 to 3. Rejoice greatly in the Lord, O righteous ones. Praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to the Lord on the lyre. Sing praises to him on a ten-string instrument. Sing to him a new song. Sing praises beautifully with a shout. The commentary says, as a creator of the world, in verses 14 till 17, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in faithfulness. He loves mercy and judgment. The earth is full of the Lord's mercy. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were established, and all the hosts of them by the bread of his mouth who gathers the waters of the sea together as in a wineskin, who put the abysses in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord, and let all the world's inhabitants be shaken by him. For he spoke, and they were made. He commanded, and they were created. The Lord scatters abroad the council of the nations and he sets aside the reasoning of peoples and he rejects the counsel of rulers the counsel of the lord bides forever the thought 
the thoughts of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose as an inheritance for himself. The Lord looked attentively from heaven. He saw all the sons of men from his prepared dwelling place. He looked upon all who dwell on the earth. He who alone fashioned their hearts. He who understands all their works. A king is not saved by his large army. And a giant shall not be saved by his immense strength. Horse is a false hope for salvation, and it shall not be saved by its enormous power. Furthermore, the commentary says, um, the hope in the Trinity to raise them from the dead in the world to come, like in verses 18 till 22. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy, to deliver their souls from the dead and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul shall wait for the Lord. He is our helper and protector, who our heart shall be glad in him. And we hope in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us as we hope in you. Further, the commentary continues. Verse 1 is a communion refrain sung on days of commemorating great saints of the church. Also, verse 6 is sung on Pentecost Sunday in glorification of the Trinity. And to verse 22 is the favorite, favorite Orthodox prayer asking the Trinity for continued mercy. The abysses from verse 7 are deep immeasurable places uh, we pray in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit to engrave his word uh, in our hearts and for us to understand psalm 32 uh, and to ponder and to rejoice uh, about the faithfulness and the mercy of the lord and for his protection and uh, let us all desire is to fix our eyes upon the Lord, to fear Him, to hope in His mercy and to believe that He will deliver our souls from death and uh, will keep us um, alive in famine and uh, let us wait for the Lord um, because He is our helper and protector and let our hearts be glad in him and uh, let us hope in his holy name let uh, god's mercy be upon us as we hope in him in jesus name we pray amen